Here is an outline of what looks like it could be a castle. It's located in the Rishat structure, right about here, about 400 kilometers from the ocean, on the continent of Africa, on the west side of the Sahara Desert. The Rishat structure is quite big, another shot from space. You can see that sand patch right there. That means that the so-called castle outline is right about here. And that is on the center island. We have a lot of information from Plato, but at first let me show you that the location is about 21 degrees, just below the Tropic of Cancer in the country of Mauritania. And if you want to find it, just follow the bottom of the Western Sahara. There's a little hook right there, and you just follow it right over and you'll find it. The Rashad structure is in this recess that's butt up against this mountain ridge. And you can see how deeply recessed the Rashad structure is into this disc circle. And you can see that the sand that moved in here has created quite high mountains and you would have to hike down into it. Uh, the city of Quadane is located here and people have to drive from here into the structure. There's a couple of different roads that go this way and that and the two triangles that mark the entrance are about right here. Also we can talk about the center and those buildings in the center that everybody's visited because everybody wants to know what's going on in the center. But the castle, it comes out this way and and it's right there, the new castle. Second castle is over here. So that one is an interesting one for me because it's showing up. Right here is where the new temple is located and the old temple. And then those structures right above it, one is right here and it just goes up this mountain. So there's a ridge up here, the top of this ridge. And the structure's on the other side. It's not a circle, but stones that are five meters wide. I mean, you can take a look at it right here with the measuring tape. Let's go from one side, that's six meters, but I got a little wide there. Five meters wide, one, two, three, four, into a definite hinge type structure. There's another one over here. Now those must be old, and I think this is like pre-Andaluvian because it got all messed up by the flood. That one right there, that's like a seven meter wide thing going on. Let's go for it. Let's go from the one edge of it. All the way across. That is almost seven meters wide. And what is it? We need to get someone down there and to take a look. You can see that this one area goes across the mountain range and that was probably a major passage through here. And you do see quite a bit of signs of structures over here which looked at in my last video some new stuff and on the outside part over here that you can't see are some things that i've shown before i'll just go back to the slides i showed you starting up here right there where the red dot is you've got this very unique thing it's actually got some similar circles in the corner and another one that's kind of more related to these things that were found in other countries, that's, I think, Iran. This right here, it looks kind of like a temple, and there it is where the red dot is there. Those are interesting. You can also see that above the Rashad structure, you've got this large area, a plain area that holds quite a bit of water marks and a ridge here. It's going across about 30 miles, so it's it's not a small little area. And over there, you've got that second, maybe you can call it dome geography or whatever that was. This Bing map has a little bit more than the Google map. This shows right here a spring of some sort. That spring is way far out. It says Telanid Spring. That's outside of the main concentric circles. We're talking about this castle and this, well I call it the castle uh, because Jimmy from Bright Insight also called it the castle. So when you look at this entire structure you wonder was it built in modern age? Was it built 13,000 years ago when Atlantis was supposed to be around. I think that if it didn't get washed away by the sea, then I, I'm just so curious. And I'm sure Jimmy is too, because I heard him offer a thousand US dollars to anybody who could get some up close photos of that. That location of the castle right there, I can do some quick measurements. Whatever this was, it had 4,800 square meters of area inside. And it's 123 meters across, maybe 124, depending on where you put your starting point. And 93 meters from the north side to the south side. Each side, 66, 62 and a half, 66. 
8.92 I've got and 82 in the back so we've got quite a bit of area and these little tiny things those little tiny circles that one is 7 meters and this one is 5.5 meters across I also got this one this one is 3.84 meters across and the little house is 5.33 meters wide and si almost 7 meters long the area of that little house is 36 meters it's almost bigger bi much bigger than my room it's about a bi as big as a house these wall structures whatever those are they kind of look like they could be stones but it looks like something in there maybe the only megalithic stones we really need to get in there and check that's 4 meters wide 3.8 4 meters wide. Garth came up with an interesting comment. Some of the more square structures with bits that jet off from the opposite corners, obviously he's talking about the castles, are very similar in design to the French Foreign Legion's forts. I gotta check that out because this was called French West Africa. The castle could be modern day structures. How old are they? Yeah, wait, he's got a picture right here. I haven't seen this yet. Some desert forts, but none of them are round. Okay, so he's using a picture of Fort Le Mans, and that has a interesting corner on one side and a corner on the other, but nothing here. So that's an interesting point, and he has stuff along the wall. So those castles most likely are some type of desert fort, it looks to me. I mean, honestly, he makes a great point. And I'm not the type of person, if if I'm not afraid to scrap anything. I think those look like they're kind of some kind of a fort. It makes sense. And somebody was talking about a camel watering hole. It doesn't make sense because you're not going to give camels 400 feet wide structures to water it. I would say more likely are some of these circles. Uh, let me show you this structures found in England and throughout Europe. And you can see these circles. Are those watering holes? No. Are those animals? Those look like animals walking around. So maybe a long time ago those were little watering holes for animals. And maybe that's what we're seeing all over. Because we certainly see a lot of circles in the Rashad structure when we're going up close. Okay, that point's finished. Now I did discover this by myself using Google Maps. But ever since this was used as a global landmark for astronauts, many people have pondered what it is, as did I when I first discovered it by myself. But when I saw this video series by Bright Insight, I knew that he really was onto something. How did I find Bright Insight? Well, when I started looking into the different megalithic structures around the world, I started to do research. I really like New Earth's channel. She's got hundreds of videos about ancient civilizations and megalithic structures. So when it comes to the term Atlantis, I think the Rishat structure was definitely Definitely the center downtown Atlantis but this ancient technology goes around the world for example here this pyramid under the ocean is 700 meters deep and if that's true then it was a long time ago when 700 meters was at sea level and by the way this could have sunk or the waters could have risen there's a lot of different ways that it, it got down there but a lot of you have been saying there's no evidence anymore but now we're looking at a whole different new ball game. I want everybody to understand there are definitely 100% megalithic structures that were made in ancient history on the Rishats regarding water. And as you can see, this eye structure remains isolated between two floodplains of sand. This is a mountain the brown of the eye and the lid of the eye is a river an ancient river there was water up against here there was water up against this edge right here and there was a canal that led straight down to this side leading water to wherever probably filling this up because there's a shoreline inside this eye as well as a shoreline across here. When it comes to ancient shorelines, I can show you some major flood catastrophe action going straight through here. Now they're saying that the Grand Canyon was created more quickly than originally thought. Now that we're saying that the type of geology that we should be studying isn't slow geology that happened over millions of years, but certain things that happened in the last 
thousands of years that changed the landscape. We now know that the civilizations that existed in the North American area even 20,000 years ago before the so-called land bridge crossers came. So we have to also take a look at flood patterns of the Sahara Desert. Now we're discovering ancient civilizations, ancient castles, ancient landsteads that people abandoned. This is a shoreline. We can go 3D with this, luckily. And when you look at this, you can see how the water tore that away and created that escarpment. When you look at the shoreline, you realize that there was a big, huge lake here on the north side. Now, I'm not saying that that's a megalithic evidence, but what I do want to show you is the one canal that leads from this. We've got double and triple shorelines in here, especially up here. So when we get over here at the top end, we can see there was an ancient body of water that created these shorelines. There's one here. Over here, there's several. This is much higher than down here. I say this was a shoreline. And this ancient shoreline went down and it created this canal that went down to the other side of the Rishat structure. Let me find out how long that canal is. I guess when you measure stuff, it goes to 2D. Okay, from here to here. How long is that? And it's perfectly straight. Now, there's a lot of other things going on in this area. But what I really care about is not... Just let me say that this whole area was a, a lead-in to that, coming around the mountains. These are much higher than over here. So this is the mountains, and it's going up about a 1,000 feet more higher than especially the lowest part. So I've already talked about these dams. I'm just going to do a quick run over. So we, at all points, we've got a canal that takes water. And I checked the topography. I'm going to show you right now the topography. What you see here is the red part is the mountains. And of course, this is the highest point at 1857. Over here, about 1600 feet. It's a little bit lower, but it's about the same. But what you do see here is this canal that I just showed you, which is right there coming across the mountains, cutting through the mountains, and getting to the other side and bringing water to this side where you see green right there, 1,100 feet. So you're, going, you're getting water to the other side here. That's a major need if you want to get water to the Rashat because there's no other place. Oh wait, maybe there is, and that's right there. Take a look at this one right here. What you see here is a water area on the north side, and then it cuts through almost touching right there. And we're going to go back to Google Earth to see it again. Let me close that down and show you right here. Now, when you look there, you're going to specifically see this, which I think is a strike of some type of cosmic impact. But what you also see when you move in here is very straight lines coming from the mountains. Now, by the way, remember this used to be jungle. You've got some kind of landmark here that I never even really looked at. What is that? Just a little mountain, but it's going pretty straight. And then when you keep going straight, it cuts through probably an ancient canal that cut through. I thought it went over there, but now I'm looking and I see that it could have gone over here. Is that a river that cuts over? And now when you get here, you're looking at what's practically a 20 kilometer long canal that's perfectly straight. What's this? Somebody who lives there now. Somebody's mining for minerals. That's mineral mining right there. You have an ancient canal right here. And the thing is, is it gets to a really straight part. Let me find it. There it is. Right there. So that river cuts through to this. Now, don't tell me that that's a natural straight line. So there is a little bit of a weird twisting river right there, probably the natural part from years ago. But then you get this that's going straight across to the other side of the mountain. Let's look at it in the topography right there from here to there. It's kind of hard to see. It gets a little more detail when we close in on it. So what I'm thinking is, is that if this is true, and it's just a hypothesis that a flood had to have torn this place apart, and maybe rain or maybe flooding 
if it really got that high, because the, the height here is 1,870 feet. It's a lot higher than the low parts. When you get to the low parts, you can see it right there, the yellow, 1,500, 1,400, even 1,200 feet. I still think this is an ancient shoreline. Wait, there's more. There's these ancient canals right over here. Let me show you. This is the highest part right here. But what you see is two ancient canals, one here and one over here. I'll go into the map and show you. It's right over here. It's coming down here and jumping over this mountain there. To get over here, how do they do it? Because this used to be an ancient river. And how do they do it? They cut through across in canals. Now the first one is right there. We can measure it. How long is that? It's at least 20 kilometers long. That's not the only one though. And you see a couple of others around here. Is that the other one right there? The other one is here. This is another, what it seems to be, man-made canal. That's 12 kilometers long right there. So you've got two of those. One here and one there. One right next to each other. Where were they going? Well, right to the other side of the mountain where the river was. They cut into these other weird-looking straight lines. I mean, this, this looks like an ancient ancient straight line here that got all jagged over time and when I'm talking about a straight line it starts from one side of the mountain to the other side right there that's 60 kilometers long let's take a look at it that's a straight line now you see other several straight lines in here you can find all sorts of little tiny things I think sand and flooding covered that area up these little areas especially Cape Blanco, Cape Merrick, very important because those are the two river outlets that I want to talk about. And you can see them here and here and here as well. There's Cape Verde down there, so the Senegal River, but up above you can see these two ancient river outlets that are non-existent today. Now these maps are after Atlantis, but what they are showing is uh, certain rivers coming out just south of the Atlas Mountains and even a lake that's north of the Hodeni village here this is where you can find other proof that there's a village after Atlantis in the Rishat structure 1584 look at all those polywog shaped lakes that were just south of the Atlas Mountains Hoden is here so you've got lakes just above this area here and even in this ancient map can find these polywog shaped lakes here just south of the Atlas Mountains. Rivers coming from mountains going all the way across the Sahara, the same thing, a lake on the west coast. And is that the Senegal River? That's questionable. Here is a basic map of the Atlas Mountains area and the Nile coming from it. And here you can see another ancient lake just north of Senegal and just south of the Atlas Mountains. And it says right there, if you follow that river down, it says Nilus ex Atlante profluens. It means the Nile from the Atlantis. Uh, they're showing it going right into the Nile. Here it says Atlantis right on the map. This one as well, it's the same Herodotus map. Atlantis and Atarantis twins. And here's a map of the Sahara Desert now. No lakes, except for some small ones up here in the corner. This relief map is pretty good, and I'm going to use it a couple times. First, I want to show you the Taman Reset River Basin here. And that is coming right out north of Cape Merrick and south of Cape Blanco, if you see. That's the big outlet. Important because when you look at the Rashad structure, you can see that things that pass on the north side of it would come out there and things that pass on the south side of it would come out below Cape Merrick. And what about our Rashad structure? Whatever happened to that? Did Atlantis sink into the ocean? Well, I don't believe so. In fact, I don't think that this coast has changed much in the last 20,000 years, and nor does mainstream science. And remember that this area here, when you look at it, it was quite tall. Let's look at some renderings of ancient lakes, especially this one. Look at that. Lake Chad 
very similar here to in here, Lake Megachad. And Lake Megafezen, well, if you take a look, you can see some similarities between this Lake Fezen right here. So Mega Pheasant, the same lake, Lake Chad. Now this is 10,000 years ago, but who's to say that it didn't form before that? We've got all these ancient lakes that existed in Africa. That Megrib Sea right there, the alignment of that, you can see where that Megrib Sea would have fallen inside this area that's lower than the other areas. The Megrib Sea was located there and its correlation to the Rashad structure is very clear. In fact, the rivers line right up. And what could have triggered this sea to go over the Atlantis? Well, just 200 kilometers away is the Tenomar Crater. It's right here. It's located in that big, huge bedrock mountain that I showed you. And it's located just 225 kilometers north of the Rashad structure. Seeing that this is all located on a, a ley line of energy throughout the earth, especially the same one that all these other megalithic structures are laid across, perhaps our previous equator, the Megreb Sea and that Tenema Crater definitely could have been triggered in some type of incident and that's why you see these sand striations going on both sides of it. Don't forget, the Rashad structure is the highest structure. You can see a little bit of the same altitudes over here in the Atlas Mountains, but this is 700 meters high. And when that Tenemore crater went off right there on this big hard piece of bedrock, that ancient lake just flew right down the Tamansaret River Basin on both sides directly towards the eye of the Sahara onto the ocean. And you can see that all these striations start here. Give you a couple of different views of those sand striations. They don't come down here. They start right up here and go straight down. So maybe there was more ancient lake there too. So what caused the decline of Atlantis? Perhaps it was a crater 20,000 to 9,000 years ago. It says 21,4 plus or minus 9. So that means that it could have been 10,000 years ago. It could have been 30,000 years ago. The Atlantis Rashad structure, this is the main point. You've got ancient lakes sitting right up above there that just flew right over everything. And we have the sand striations to prove it. Have a great day. I look forward to your comments below. Thank you very much.
The size and shape is really similar to what Plato was talking about. The distance from Athens is also quite similar. If you take a quick left right outside the pillars of Hercules, you get there in about 4,000 miles.